if you are in a season that feels temporary, and to be honest, it seems like most seasons are, uh, this episode's for you. And some thoughts that I've had around it is I've tried to kind of grapple with and figure out how to approach and how to think about our own circumstances that are temporary. So this goes under my thriving thoughts category. I love to take things that are challenging for me, these thoughts that do not serve me, that are hard for me, and change them into thoughts that I feel like I go through a process and get ideas from God about how he can see my thoughts and understand them and how I how it could be better, how it could be easier for me. And then I dub them these thriving thoughts. So I'll share the process with you today so you can create your own and also share one today that's helping me a lot and may help you as well. Hi, I'm Jessica Jackson, and this is the new way to thrive in motherhood by leaning into who you are, what you love, your unique family situation and personal mission to create a life that you actually want to live. I want to invite you to join me in saying no to the life of the exhausted supermom, burnout, victim thinking, being pulled in so many directions, suffering through survival mode, or being lost in motherhood, and say yes to building strong families and moving forward on our greatest goals in order to create a fulfilling life that we are excited to wake up to each day and become a soaring mother. This is the Thriving in Motherhood podcast. I want to invite you to check out the five-step path from surviving to thriving checklist. This is a very actionable guide that I created to help meet you where, where you're at in any season of motherhood to really support you and being able to identify what to focus on right now, what problems to solve right now, and how to thrive in any of those seasons, especially the hard ones. And you can get that at thrivinginmotherhoodpodcast.com slash checklist. So where we live right now, we've been here for almost five years. And now I moved a ton growing up. I went to 10 schools between kindergarten and, and 12th grade. And then my husband and I, since getting married, have moved probably 10 more times. We've been all over from east, and, you know, east coast, midwest, south, west, like we've been all over. And so... Moving is something I'm very familiar with. I understand how to jump into a temporary situation, how to make friends. But when we moved here, I really struggled because it's a position where we could be here forever, but we also might not be. And for some reason, this idea of we might be here forever, but also might not be, like I can't, I, I've never experienced that before of what staying would look like. And so it's been really hard for me to navigate that and to be able to make, um, decisions or feel comfortable with anything that we do because I know it's might not be temporary but it still could be and so how do you invest in things that might not be temporary but could be like for me that's been really really hard and as I was thinking about it with our own circumstances like literally whether we're moving or not at some point um, I realized oh my goodness this totally applies to when you've got your kids and you're in the exact season you are whether they're toddlers or whether they're in elementary school or whether they're in teenagers it's these things where you there's good things and there's hard things in every season and they're also temporary and what do you do when you know it's fleeting and when the things that you invest in right now are going to change whether it's you know figuring out the napping schedule you know it's going to change like why why waste your time doing that right when it seems like everything that we do with our kids once we solve a problem that it, it, it changes and so or and if you don't solve it it still changes so so why bother but here is something that i this was again this has been years that i've been trying to figure out how to think about the situation in our own lives. And what came to me after much prayer and much thinking and studying and pondering was I feel like just this thought straight from God, which is how this is this house this is how this works for me, right? I pray a lot about these things, I think about these things, and at some point I feel like God helps me see things differently. He gives me that paradigm shift to use the language from Seven Habits and Stephen Covey. And so the paradigm shift that I had was, and this is kind of the direction I had was it's fine. Whatever you have now, the things that you love now, because I think that the hard thing is losing the things that we love right now. That's hard. Um, but the thought was embrace all of the good things right now. Just fully embrace them and enjoy them while you have them. And if you don't have them later, that's okay. You can embrace what's next. So tangibly with our home, I love the home that we live in right now. It's small. It's fairly easy to manage and keep clean. Uh, it's been easy for us to make, you know, some pretty, like we updated the kitchen because it's small and we could afford to update a small kitchen, not a big kitchen, but we could do a small kitchen. And 
with our yard, we've put in a very large garden that we just love. Um, my husband's just finishing building a rock climbing wall in our garage, which we love. Um, we have woods, our house backs up into woods. And so even though we're in like a neighborhood, we have so much privacy in the back and the kids can go play and dig and do, uh, do all the kids stuff that you can do in woods. But we also have a yard. So we have the best of both worlds there. Um, and we have a neighborhood with sidewalks so we can walk in them. So I'm like, we have, it's like the perfect little pocket for our family right now. And so when I think about things changing and having to leave that, I, I go into the scarcity of mindset of, well, but how could we have a space with the large, you know, for the garden and the yard and the, all the things that we love? Like we love all these things. And, um, and at the same time, I've had thoughts of like, is it even worth putting a garden in if it, like, we have to leave it? Or is it even worth planting fruit trees if we have to leave it? Or is it even, does it make even make sense to financially invest into putting a rock climbing wall if we just have to leave it? And what I've came to is absolutely yes. Yes, yes, yes. Because we are just getting the most out of this space, out of the resources that we have um, while we have them. And if someday it changes, then... I'm so, I can look back and just be so grateful that we embraced what we had while we had it. And we don't have to try and recreate it somewhere else. We can embrace the new set of circumstances and eke the goodness out of them while we have them. And it's okay that they're different. We can just fully embrace them. And so I think when it comes to our kids too, and we, we can feel that like, oh, just that tug in the pole of this is so temporary. It's all temporary. It's so fleeting. I'm feeling that more as my, my, my oldest is turning 11 and I'm like, oh my gosh, like she's more than halfway done. It just goes so like, we've hit that like critical point where her just growing up is so fast and it like kind of breaks my heart, but we're also hitting like, it's just getting more fun too. So it's complicated, but I'm realizing the same principle applies. I don't need to hold back. Like I can go all in and invest in my kids and in the things they love and in our circumstances. And I maybe, yes, financially, but mostly like with my time, my energy and my attention and just like embrace it and enjoy it wholly. And then when I've done that, when the season changes, I can be so grateful that I gave it my all in that season that's now passed and I can adapt and enjoy the new circumstances when they're there. And so whether you are, again, whether it's just with your children and embracing it while you have it and, and what we have when we have it and then being okay and open to embracing the new thing, even though it's going to be different, it could still be amazing. Um, or whether you're in like temporary situations like me or you're, I don't know, you got something else going on. Uh, I hope that this idea, this thriving thought is helpful to you. And even more importantly, I hope again that this is a pattern. I've got quite a few episodes here on thriving thoughts. Again, it's this pattern of making, not making life harder than it needs to be. We can eliminate so much of our suffering, so much of our struggling by just becoming aware of what our thoughts are and learning to change them. I have a question in the Thriving in Motherhood journal that I ask every day, what were some unhelpful thoughts today and how could I think about things differently? That is where these thriving thoughts come from. And while I might not need that question every single day, I might not need to evaluate it. I am looking every day when I use that Thriving in Motherhood journal to really help me look reflectively and eliminate that suffering because, and it doesn't always come right away. This is something that took a long time for me to work through, but now I feel total peace about it because it was the answer that I needed spoken right to my heart um, in a way that made sense to me. And so it might not for you and that's fine, but this process is really, really powerful. I have a special announcement to the, I have a brand new program that I am opening up to help you along the path from surviving to thriving. So many of you love that checklist, you know, hundreds and hundreds of women have downloaded that surviving to thriving checklist, but I realized that there's a huge gap because there is so much more that I do in each one of those distinct phases along that path. And I have way more ways to serve you with helping you get clarity about what matters, what the vision is, what are the different system and structures I have along each step of the path, and what are the different things that I intend to with that soul pillar. You know, we've got our three pillars of thriving, and what I do along each step of the path is different to support those three essential pillars. That's how you don't feel like you're just totally losing your mind all the time, even when the circumstances are hard. And so this program is being created. To be honest, I'm filming this before we went to Utah. We're traveling, so you're watching it while we're on our road trip. And so I'm not sure on the timing of the 
uh, the timeline on the release of it yet, but you can definitely sign up for the wait list if you go to thrivingandmotherhoodpodcast.com slash toolkit, where you'll learn all of the details and also can get on the wait list to find out when the doors are opening. I'm gonna have a very special opportunity available when I first launch this program and I'm excited to just serve you way better because I feel like I've really dropped the ball and now I can see that there's been this huge gap between how I can help you and how I want to help you. And so, yeah, check it out, thrivingmotherhoodpodcast.com slash toolkit. So I hope you have a wonderful week and I will talk to you next week. Bloom where you are planted, watch the blossoms grow.